Hey, so today I'm going to do a quick um, excerpt reading from my own book uh, based on a reading I did recently for the Geneva Writers Group. We were each given three minutes, and I said to my husband, this is going to be tricky to come up with a three-minute excerpt. Do you have any suggestions? He only just read the book after it came out, uh, published, so it was fresh in his mind, and he said, oh, by the way, I should tell you, he's English. Um, he said, oh, yeah, why don't you read a scene between Chip and Ticia, two of my teenage characters. And he said, of course, the only trouble is you're going to turn the air blue. And we've been married 22 years, and it's rare that he says anything that, as an American, I don't get. But I've never heard that phrase, turn the air blue. Um, but this book is about synesthesia. It's about a character who has a blending of senses. She sees her numbers and her letters in color. She experiences phantom smells when she sees certain colors. She hears music in her foods. Um, it's quite disruptive um, and yet also sort of a gift for her. And the story is about her uh, and her experiences. But it's also about her son, Chip. And um, as soon as my husband said this turn the air blue thing, I was like, okay, that is my introduction to my three-minute excerpt. So, uh, and I knew my crowd was going to be um, in large part British. So that was a really fun way to introduce my little excerpt, which I then uh, was able to read that evening um, over Swiss wine at Webster University for that crowd. So I'm going to read you just this quick little scene between um, a 14 year old boy and his new classmates in his English school. They've become expats in England and he's a precocious kid but not quite sure how he's going to fit in and um, I'll just take it from there. Neem called Henrik's name and as if on cue in he sauntered. The room smelled acrid and sharp dry erase markers, power aid and cologne and Henrik swept through it parting the waves as he ambled broad shouldered down the central aisle. Everybody noticed him. Henrik looked at Chip and nodded. Chip pulled his big, eager feet under his desk. Dialogue in his head threatened to tumble out uncontrolled, like the wafting chemical stink of energy drinks. Hello, Henrik, how's it going, pant, pant, human puppy dog? How is rugby? Do they play rugby in Sweden? Chip barely raised his eyelids. Henrik dropped his backpack on the floor and slid into his desk chair. Neem eyeballed the students and waved a stack of quiz papers. Miss Alagi, do the honors? A black-haired girl in a purple tank top stood. Lots of braids, maybe many of them sprouting little escaping bits of hair. Her jean jacket was tied around her waist. She took Neem's papers and shuffled them. Chip rubbed his fingertips on his notebook page and could read the impression like Braille. God damn. Only one week of school, and Miss Olagi seemed to know everyone's name. Chip watched her hand a quiz back, paper back to Henrik, flipping her braids over her bare shoulder. Impressive, she said. Henrik rolled his eyes. Chip saw the red ink, but he couldn't tell if Henrik got an A or an F, if Miss Olagi was being sarcastic. A or F, A or F, how do you spell success? I got an A, I wanted less. At 14 years old, how to impress? Dude, Miss Olagi jabbed a paper into Chip's chest, a perfect score. Chip took the paper, staring at the badges pinned to the girl's jean jacket, pressing against his desk at hip level. I heart Macedonia, and a smaller one, getting used to getting used. Cool button, he said. She looked at her hip. National Macedonia Day, flag raising at noon. Well, I meant the other one. She stared at him. It's ironic. I figured. Some don't, she raised an eyebrow. Chip stared at her, the silence begging for another clever two-word response. Her eyes were blue, like Henrik's eyes, the color of swimming pool water, but hers were rimmed with black, like her hair. If he brought this girl home, Chip's mother would speak without thinking, and she'd owe all her loose change to the profanity jar. Carol Ann wouldn't like Miss Alagi one bit. She never liked anyone new, girl, boy, adult, child, work colleague, no one. Back home, everyone already knew everyone, and Chip suddenly realized he didn't know how to meet people, not to mention the problem of his age. He stared at Miss Alagi's braids, and his mouth dropped open like a guppy, or the original village idiot. They think I'm advertising, she tapped the button, getting used to getting used. People are dimwits, Chip said his father's favorite explanation for anything. 
She laughed, a sparkling, glittery, jingle bell laugh. How long you in for, she asked. Standard two to five? Chip stared at her. Your assignment, your dad's overseas contract, hit and run, lifetime expat, you guys local? Is your mom the contract? I, uh, Chip stammered. Don't tell me you're a virgin. Chip gasped. Of course she didn't mean virgin virgin, but what if she did? Was it obvious? Nothing wrong with it. I love virgins. The girl shook Chip's hand. I'm Tisia Olagi. She repeated it. Tisia. Her hand felt warm and small and strong. Her smile was pure sunshine. She beamed and said, don't worry, virgin. I'll get you settled in. Well, that was five minutes and 46 seconds. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, check out the book Rapeseed, a novel, Nancy Friend. Thanks for watching.